What's up my comic comrades? Today we're gonna to start covering the long-awaited Star Wars crossover event, War of the Bounty Hunters. It's an event that will be crossing over into several of the Marvel Star Wars titles. It's gonna be telling us everything Boba Fett went through bringing back Han Solo, Frozen, and Carbonite to Jabba the Hutt. So it's one of those stories that gives us a little more insight on a major part of Star Wars lore. But with that said, let's talk about the first Mandalorian we ever saw in Star Wars, Boba Fett, and his brand new story, War of the Bounty Hunters. The story starts off with the ever so beautiful yellow scroll that reads, Boba Fett, the galaxy's most dangerous hunter, claims the bounty of notorious smuggler and rebel officer Han Solo. Jabba the Hutt eagerly awaits Fett's delivery of Solo's carbonite frozen body to Tatooine, where the crime lord will enact his final revenge. Han Solo's debt is thus paid, but Boba Fett is desperate for a payday himself. Then on the next page, we see the Slave One flying through space with Boba Fett saying, tell Jabba I've got his package. As we get a panel of him staring at Han frozen in carbonite, Bib Fortuna then tells him over the comms, and he is alive? Frozen in carbonite, yes, but Han Solo remains alive? The great and exalted Jabba was specific about his requirements for this delivery, Boba Fett, as we see Fortuna talking to Boba Fett back on Tatooine at the palace of Jabba the Hutt. Fett then answers, he's alive. I'll be there soon. Make sure Jabba has my credits. Don't want any complications. But as Fett finishes his sentence, he sees that the device that stores the carbonite is beeping. He then looks at Han's hand and sees the carbonite is melting. Fortuna then hears the beep over the comms and asks, what is that sound? An alarm? Bubba says, I'll call you back. Hanging up as the device keeps beeping faster and faster while Carbonite is melting around Han's hand. And it continues to melt to which Boba Fett says, nothing's ever simple. Fett then heads to Narshada, the smuggler's moon, where we see he's meeting up with an acquaintance of his to check to see what's wrong with the Carbonite. This acquaintance tells them the Carbonite Matrix is unstable, not surprised with an organic inside. Whose bright idea was this? Boba Fett says, not mine, Doc. Can you keep him alive? Doc answers, yeah, I can stabilize him so you won't have this problem again. Just need a little tinkering. Boba Fett says, that's good, do it. Doc then tells him, sure, cash up front and I'll get to work. You know how I operate. Fett then says, about that. This is Han Solo. Once I deliver him, I can pay you double your usual fee. But he needs to be alive. Doc says, Solo, huh? That guy was always the king of bad choices. Guess they finally caught up with him. But Doc Raggin, don't work on credit, Boba. Doc eventually says, either give me money up front or maybe you could pay me another way. He goes on to tell Boba, Narkanji has a warrior pit, Warman Lictor. She killed a fighter I once sponsored, cost me a bundle. I've always wanted her dead, but she's valuable to the Kanji huts, so they keep her protected. You take her out, we're square. Fett's all like, your problems are your problems. I've got enough people against me. Don't need the Kanji on me too. Doc then tells him, guess that's fair, but if you don't get involved in my my problems, Fett, I won't get involved in yours. As we see Han Solo and Carbonite slowly about to melt into goo, as Doc puts it. At this point, Boba Fett is like, crap, fine, I'll do it. Can't I just kill her now? Doc says, you'd have to get past a thousand kanji. I told you, she's valuable to them. They keep her protected, but in the arena, anything goes. It's your best chance. Boba then says, the kanji will be on me either way. This armor has a reputation. Doc replies, no problem, I've got some nano spray paint. Use it to mark up patients before surgery. Evaporates in a few days. You could look however you want. Now do you have any more objections? The more we talk, the closer Han Solo gets to being goo. As we see Fett not wanting to do this, he asks, what's this Worman's ranking in the arena? Doc answers, ain't you been listening? I told you, she's valuable, she's the champion. On the next page, we see Boba Fett arrive at the arena, giving his entry fee and registering for the fight. The alien lady at the booth then says, your entry fee is all here, that's good, now I just need your name. He responds, call me Django, as we see he used Doc's nano spray paint to temporarily color his armor black, as well as using his father's name. The person behind the counter then says, okay, you're all set Django, you'll have your first bout in about an hour. You keep fighting until you lose or decide to quit. If you win, you get to triple your entry fee. You can keep it or fight again, with the same chance to triple it. Boba then says, good system. She replies, if you win. As Boba prepares to enter his first fight and the doors open to the arena, he reminisces of picking up his father's helmet years earlier in Attack of the Clones. While the announcer says, it's a Worm Town Arena favorite, Johnny the Sting, working on his third victory in a row against the new competitor, let's hear it for the best car brawler, Django. We then get a nice double page spread of Boba now going by Django to keep undercover, easily defeat his first four opponents all of which he defeated by either stabbing, shooting, or cutting off their heads. But this now puts Boba in the main event against the reigning champion, Worman Lictor, who we soon find out is this gigantic humanoid mutant spider alien thing. We then get a panel of Boba putting up his blasters and getting to work as the battle begins. Lictor says, you look like a little beetle, all shiny and black, delicious. As Boba flies around her, shooting rockets at her, she then says, blast you, I'll wrap you up, 
and drink you dry as she shoots him with her webbing. She then pulls him out of the air, ripping his jetpack off of him and then tries to jump on top of him while saying, you can't fly now, little buggy. You're all mine. But before she can land on him, he chops off one of her legs, but she quickly retaliates by piercing him through the chest with another one of her legs. Having him pinned on the ground with one of her legs piercing his chest, she says, look at all your little juices running out. What a waste. Need to get you webbed up and into my larder before all the good stuff leaks out. Which I gotta say is kind of gross. The way spiders eat is really disgusting. Not a fan. But come on, this is Boba Fett we're talking about. You think this Mando is gonna let himself be drained from the inside out by a spider alien? I don't think so. So he pressed some buttons on his gauntlet, which activates an explosion from his jetpack, causing Lictor to fly off of him with debris and rubble landing on top of her, squashing her like the bug she is. As Boba Fett lands on top of all the rubble and guts. After this, Boba Fett with pink and purple guts all over him makes his way to the alien he was talking to earlier saying, I won. I'll take my credits. But he's interrupted by some man who says, we'll keep it safe for you. Don't worry. Boba then says, Kanji, of course. There won't be a next fight. I won. I'm done. The Kanji then tell him, well, you owe us for the money we lost on Worm and Lictor. Had a lot bet on her to win. You could earn it all back for us in one fight. Then if you win, you're good to go. Unless you'd rather just walk away. Boba not wanting to deal with this and already completing his mission of killing Lictor says, just keep it and walks away. Elsewhere on the smuggler's moon, we see Doc telling someone, you don't have to do this. I'm a businessman. I'm sure we could work something before this mysterious person in the shadows shoots Doc and kills him. This mystery person then tells two of their henchmen, load up as they steal Han frozen in carbonite. A little bit after this, Boba Fett returns, but he sees that Doc is dead and Han Solo has been stolen. And of course, at this very moment, he gets a call from Bib Fortuna saying, Boba Fett, you have not yet delivered Han Solo as promised. The great and powerful Jabba the Hutt grows impatient for his prize. You should know better than to disappoint the exalted and wise Jabba. Boba Fett replies, I'm not going to disappoint him. I'm on the way. But tell Jabba it's going to be a minute as he puts his hand on his head like, crap, what am I going to do now? And with that, so begins the War of the Bounty Hunters. I really enjoyed this issue. I think it was cool to get more insight on Boba's journey from Cloud City to Tatooine. I'm a massive fan of Boba Fett and Mandalorians in general, so this event book is right up my alley. Plus, that cliffhanger is great and tells us why this event is called War of the Bounty Hunters, because essentially, all the bounty hunters in the galaxy will be battling for everyone's favorite smuggler and scoundrel, Han Solo. Hence, War of the Bounty Hunters, because now Boba Fett is going to try to get Han back, which as we know from the original trilogy, he of course does. But it's going to be a fun journey to see how he does, and I'm sure other people are going to go after Han, so it's just going to be this massive war, and I'm curious to see how many familiar and new faces we end up seeing. So I am all about this. Also, this is the biggest story Marvel has done with the Star Wars line to date and I'm so glad they chose Boba Fett to do it with. Anyway, that's just my two cents. What do you guys think of this kickoff to Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters? Do you want us to keep covering it? I know I definitely want to keep talking about it, so let us know all of that in the comment section. First up for the week of the 19th, we have the Flash issue 770. Dropped into the battlefields of World War II, Wally West continues his search for a way home. Meanwhile, Wally's friends in the present day search for a way to bring him back and an answer to why he's stuck leaping from speedster to speedster throughout time. Now we have Amazing Spider-Man 66. On the other side of King's Ransom, Spider-Man is left to pick up the pieces. If he can manage to put them back together, he's going to be horrified with what he finds. Next we have Star Wars Bounty Hunters issue 12. We're in it now guys, the Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters event. Who is this mysterious leader of an assassination squad that is driving Valance into a life and death confrontation with his old friend? And finally, we have Nightwing issue 80. All I'm gonna say is this new Nightwing arc written by Tom Taylor is great. Go buy it and read it, like now. And just like that, that brings today's episode of Variant to a close. But if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. It always helps out the channel. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.